Um, hey guys, so uh, we've got a few things to look at today. So I'm gonna try to get some of this off the bench and we'll go through them one at a time. Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Adam. Thanks for hanging out with me again today. And on today's episode, we're just going to take a look at the projects that are going to be coming up over the next three, four, five, six months. Who knows? <laughs> um, as you can see from the intro, it kind of took up the whole bench and there's still stuff on the floor. These are going to be kits that I have either had for a while, have gotten fairly recently, or just got. Um, that are coming up to get built, refurbished, whatever the case may be. Um, but some of these you guys have seen, I've been holding on to some of them for a while just because new things have come in and kind of pushed them to the back. And you know, some of them are just going to be longer term builds that I'm not ready to jump into yet. So what I wanna do is I wanna jump into what's, you know, quote, new kit, and um, we'll take a look at those real fast. So some of these you guys have seen already. Now, as far as the Avantes, I've got the Junior Aero Avanti built, and that one's done. I have the mid-size Aero Avanti um, one, the kit built, I just need, and the body's cut out, I need to paint that. Um, we have the big Aero Avanti. That one is built and ready to go. I just need, again, to paint the body. It's all cut out, just needs to be sanded and painted. And I gotta get the decals on both of those. So those are gonna be the two, well, two or three that you're gonna see up very soon. So I'm hoping I can get paint on those this weekend, get decals on them, and then kind of do a, you know, small, medium, large display of them, hopefully get a couple out driving around. Now, one I've had for a little bit that I have not gotten to yet is the Subaru Brat. Um, I ordered this way back in January, February of this year, and it took forever for the back order to finally show up. Um, so I've had this for probably two months now, and it, like I said, it's just kind of gotten put on the back burner between other projects and other things going on. But this, I do want to get built. Um, it's going to take a while because of the two bodies, you know, body work on one, paint prep work on both. Uh, so this one's going to take a little bit. So that one's kind of why this one's been pushed back a little. Um, but I do want to do, um, I'm thinking like a metallic red for the regular hard body. And then I don't know if I want to do the blue for the Lexan because most times they're red or blue. Um, I ordered the um, MCI decals for the hard body, um, hoping that I could do something similar to the red, you know, a different flavor of it. I don't know. I may do something completely custom. I'm not sure, but I do have an extra set of decals for a full truck and those are the vintage type from MCI. So that one will be coming up soon. So we also, you guys have seen this a little bit, um, we do have the Avante Mark II. Um, so this one will be coming up fairly soon. I kind of want to get this built alongside those, uh, the Aero Avantes. Um, so the Mark II will be coming up probably right after those. This Gigantimus thing, the Hilux. Um, I've had this for at least six, eight months now, at least, if not almost a year at this point. I can't remember. Um, but I just, I have not felt like I had enough time to sit down and devote to such a long, not tedious build, but a long involved build and to do the body work that I want to do the body work. You know, I want to get this to where it's, you know, blemish free just like the the box art is so there's gonna be a lot of sanding a lot of paint a lot of prep a lot of resanding all that stuff to get this as nice as i can so this one's probably going to be a winter project you know i can do the sanding and painting out in the garage and it can stink out there and then i can be working on this inside so this one is coming it may be somewhere you know december january time frame before i have you know a stretch of time to where i can devote to working on this one Oh, good Lord, this thing is so heavy. And I have one more new inbox kit. Um, it's a lunchbox. So a while back, uh, Luke from Luke's Vintage RC uh, made a comment that said he really wanted to see me do another custom lunchbox. And it has been a while. So this one will be a custom one. Uh, I'm not telling you what type. Uh, you guys can probably look back in the, the history of my lunch boxes and see which ones I haven't done yet. Um, there's only a couple kind of 
famous vans that I really haven't got to yet. <laughs> so um, this one will be coming up as a, as a kind of a, a request from Luke to do another custom lunchbox, which I've been wanting to do anyway. So this one is an eBay purchase and I have had this for a minute and I need to do something with it. But this has the um, attack radio, Fatabo attack radio system in it, twin stick. Um, it actually has, you know, bits and pieces and everything. It has the Duratrax Intellipeak, Intellispeed um, uh, ESC in it. Uh, what was this? Oh, these are spare um, shock towers that it came with. So the kit is the Raider. Now, I know some of you Kenai people are going, what the hell, Adam? There's one right there. Yeah, there is. But, you know, it's really pretty. And I don't want to scrape it up and scratch it up. And this one is decent. But it's got some battle scars to it. And this one is the one that's going to get scratched up. Um, so I'm not going to do another body for this one. I have this body. And I want to say I have another body somewhere. Um, that came from that one, but this one has some issues. You know, it's got mismatched hardware on it. You know, somebody's run this, had fun with it, fixed it a couple times. You know, it has a square nut on here. You know, like somebody robbed grandpa's hardware drawer and you know borrowed something. So you know, there's going to be some hardware need to be replaced on there. I'm going to have to go through the gearboxes. Everything feels good. It just kind of sounds dry. So we gotta go through all that, go through, check, make sure if we need any bearings, put bearings in. But overall, this buggy is in pretty good shape. You know, it's not banged up, it's not broken. You know, it's not held together by tape and stuff. Um, it just needs some TLC and then we can go have fun with it. So that is gonna be the uh, runner uh, Raider. So I hope to get that one built or rebuilt fairly soon. I'm not gonna go through it with a fine tooth comb and you know, pick out every little bit of grit and dirt and everything. It's going to get cleaned up, it's going to get rebuilt, and it's going to be run. So I'm not going to, you know, fret over that to get it meticulously clean. So the next one is actually uh, a gift that was sent in to me not too long ago. And, you know, guys, I, I feel your pain. If you're tired of, and sick and tired of hearing Adam, I'd be like, oh, great, Adam got something else for free. Dude, I, I greatly appreciate it. Um, and I don't know what I did to deserve any of this, but... You know, I get it. Uh, and I've, I've, I have noticed in the videos where I talk about somebody sent in something to the channel, you know, I lose a subscriber or two because somebody is probably on the other end bent that, you know, somebody sent me something for free. You know, only thing I can say is I didn't ask for it. I greatly appreciate the gifts and, you know, I absolutely adore them. The cars that I've been given are some of my most cherished cars in my collection because they have a story behind them. But, you know, I get it. I've been there on the other side of the screen and be like, oh, I wish somebody would send me some free stuff. And all I can say is start a YouTube channel and put three years worth of effort into it and maybe people will send you something. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing and I don't know why people send me stuff, but I do greatly appreciate it. With that out of the way, this was sent to me by a subscriber, uh, a viewer of the channel, and somebody I've talked to quite a bit um, over the, the last uh, almost a year now. I guess it was before it was before Christmas last year. It is where the Optima came from, and he reached out and said, "Hey, I have another." kit that's sitting around here that needs some TLC and some special care. Uh, would you be interested? I'm not going to say no. <laughs> so this one is a very cool kit. Um, it does need some parts. So this one is probably going to be one of the later ones on the list of stuff to get to just because I do have to source some bits and pieces for it and go through it and all that stuff. So we have an Outlaw Ultima truck. Now this is an RC-10 body. <laughs> he sent the RC-10 body along with this. He had bought this years and years ago um, when Tower Hobbies was having a clearance sale. Evidently picked up a bunch of them and this is just an extra one that he didn't need. Um, he cut it out to put on something but um, you know he doesn't need it so he sent it over. So this is the chassis. Um, the chassis is in very, very good shape. It's got scuffs and stuff on the rear, but the front's in decent shape. It's got some scuffs on the bumper, but you know, the arms are in great shape. The shocks are in great shape. So this one is in very good shape. I'm not going to get into the, all of it, all the details of it right now. Um, but it's a good, 
you know, slider chassis. It has the motor in it. It has a super stock 34 Kyosho motor in it. So decent motor. Um, it, I've looked over this truck. It's in really good shape and it's almost, you know, clean it up and stick a body on there. So I do have the wheels for it. Um, they need to get cleaned up a little bit more. They have some paint and stuff on them, um, but I'm pretty sure I can get those cleaned up. Um, there's a few extra parts in here, bits and pieces. I had to cut because I was making too much noise getting it back in the box. But this one is going to be something I'm in the process of trying to source some bits and pieces for it. I have a body coming from Team Blue Groove. I have decals coming from MCI. Should be here in a week or so because um, I ordered those as soon as I <laughs> got this. Uh, but there's just a few small little bits and pieces. I got to source some tires for it and stuff like that. I'm probably not going to go with the stock ones. I'm probably just going to find something that fits the wheels um, that look close to stock. It's a pro lines or something. Um, but that one will be coming up and down the road a little ways. Like I said, I got to finish getting the parts for it. All right, so this next one is another eBay find. Um, going back to uh, Luke's Vintage RC, um, again, it's probably been eight months to a year ago. Um, he did a video where he restored a truck and, you know, my jaw hit the floor and I wanted it so bad. <laughs> I actually told Luke, I said, if you ever want to sell that truck, please let me know. I want to be first in line. Now, he has not wanted to sell that truck, and I don't blame him. It looks great. So I finally found one for my own. So if you guys don't know right away, this is a Traxxas Sledgehammer. And it needs a few things, but overall, it's in really good shape. Um, it needs a gear cover. Um, it needs a couple tie rod ends and a spring retainer for one of the shocks, and then just a good cleanup and rebuild. Um, so normally these rear bumpers, um, kind of grab handle bumpers, um, are really torn up. You know, they do a lot of wheelies and drag back here. Um, that's in really good shape. The arms are all looking in good shape, crack free. Um, the drive axles are still there drive and you know, everything looks really, really good. The, um, bottoms aren't all scarred and scraped up. They got a few little nicks and scratches on there, but nothing bad. You know, somebody took decent care of this. There's a couple marks on the body where the tires rubbed on them, but those should um, polish out. So this one is going to be a shell queen. Um, the white plastic ones, you know, they, over time, these white plastic, the nylon gets a little brittle. Um, so this one's going to be pretty much a shell queen. Um, I have the original tires for it, which are kind of hard as a rock. Um, so I do have new tires. Um, unfortunately, the wheels have seen better days. Um, the chrome on these things often corroded and that's what looks like happened here. It started corroding and somebody cleaned it up and it all started flaking off. So I will see what I can do to try to restore, refurbish the wheels. So if anybody has done that, um, if you guys know any good spray paint, and again, this isn't going to get run. The wheels aren't chipped up or dinged up really bad. So I think if I can find something, you know, I can strip these take them back down to plastic, prime them, and then spray them with something. So if you guys know a good chrome spray paint, um, that would actually, you know, somewhat resemble the um, kind of polished chrome that these are, let me know. But everything is here, as far as I can tell. Like I said, I do need a, um, a gear cover for the side. And I think that's, and I, and I know I have a spring cup uh, or a spring perch for the bottom of the shot, uh, but it does have the, the battery um, hold down. And I don't know whether I'm going to try to find an old um, XL5 um, ESC or try to put a mechanical one in. Um, haven't figured that out yet. It does have a Fataba receiver in here, but no radio system. So, of course, while looking for parts for this, um, you know, things happen. And then you find the newer version, the black chassis um, with the blue anodized aluminum on it. Uh, for less than what you paid for the white one. So about the about the about the black one. <laughs> so what I may do is, you know, I, one of them is going to be a runner. I don't want to run the white one just because the plastics are so nice. I don't want to get them grungy and scraped up and stuff. This one is in really good shape. You know, there's barely a nick or scratch on these um, anodized pieces. Um, so it really looks like somebody ran it around 
out in a parking lot on the pavement, wore down the nubs, and then stuck it on the shelf, and it's been sitting there for a long time just collecting dust. Um, it's not banged up at all. There are some scrapes and scratches back here on the, the wheelie bar where it has drug a little bit, but not bad. Um, this one does have the mechanical speed control in it. This is the old Traxxas style where you mounted the servo into the chassis and then the speed controller mounted down on top of it and it just turned the um, controller as it mounted down onto the servo. So it actually has twin resistors back here underneath the blue aluminum shroud. Um, this one is missing the um, battery hold down. But the cool thing is, is I have this battery hold down. I can cut another one out of carbon fiber and just have a little uh, carbon fiber one in here. Um, so this one is going to be the runner. And I do have a Team Blue Groove body for it. Um, the only thing I don't have for this is the roll bar. And I'm getting another Team Blue Groove body for the white one. And I don't have a roll bar for that one either. So. If anybody has a roll bar and light set for you know a reasonable price, you know, let me know. Maybe we can work something out. But this one actually does have the gear cover on there, held together by a uh, cool safety pin. If you don't have your regular um, body pins, then you know a safety pin will work, I guess. And it kept them from losing it. They lost that one. Uh, this one has probably the stock, you know, Traxxas motor in there. I don't see a decal on it. It has the heat sink on there. But this one, you know, definitely needs a whole lot more cleanup than that one. Um, this one I was going to put in peroxide, but honestly, I think it's in such clean condition. I'm just going to pull the shocks off of it, do a good external clean, and put it back together. I'm not going to worry about, you know, bleaching that one and possibly making the, the nylon even more brittle than it probably already is. This one's going to have to be completely torn down and completely scrubbed up. It is grody. And I just realized one of the, there's another safety pin. Um, this one's kind of a danger. <laughs> but anyway, so I have two. One's going to be a runner. One's going to be a shell queen. So just like that. Um, now, these rims are actually in much better shape. So we may actually transport these wheels over to the Shelf Queen, put the new tires on there, and then we'll just use kind of the softest of the um, stock tires and just run that on the other, uh, on, the, on the runner truck. Okay, so this one is the last one for right now. I'm sure there's going to be more showing up soon enough. But <clears throat> this one's been something I've been looking for for quite a while. And I'm not going to say that this is the one but it is one that I will work with for now. So if you guys aren't familiar, um, the sledgehammer is one that I had had many, 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 many years ago and sold off. And at the time I didn't mind selling it. I was helping out a friend, um, but now I kind of regret selling it because it's no longer with me and I kind of miss it. Solve that problem. But there's also another one that I let go of years and years ago that was, you know, my first. So, I have found a Super Blackfoot. Most of a Super Blackfoot. <laughs> um, if you can't tell, it's it has some issues. So, overall, the truck was in very, very good shape. And the seller packed the truck very, very, very well. Um, the box came in in pretty great shape. You know, it wasn't banged up. It wasn't smashed up. But unfortunately, the front shock tower that basically just mounts to the front end here and then mounts to this, um, this was not attached to the front shock tower and just the movement in the box of the body wiggling around a little bit snapped these two mounting holes out. Not a huge deal. Um, I can take the body mount off and make a new one out of um, carbon fiber. I have looked for this part. I cannot find this part. I've been on eBay and all over the internet. I've been on Bayi. I cannot find this part. Um, the front shock towers on the Super Blackfoot and I believe it was the um, Bush Devil uh, were both a different design 
that was a little bit different shaped and had the longer um, front shocks. It's broken. It is what it is. I didn't complain to the seller. I didn't complain to uh, the delivery service. It's just something that happens. Um, you know, if this had been mounted to it and, you know, this firmly secured to the, the body or to the chassis, probably wouldn't have broke. It's just one of those things that happen. Again, I can make one, but kind of would like to have an original. But anyway, um, I need to source front shocks for it. Um, I do have the motor cover and the pinion here. The body has seen much better days. You know, the, the back corners are just like my old one and basically almost non-existent. Uh, tail light snapped off, of course. It's missing the sunroof. The driver figure's in there. Um, thankfully, well, yeah, he's broken too. Yeah, he's broken off his mounting tab. Um, it's missing the windshield. Um, so, you know, the body's kind of... You know, uh, not in the best shape. The chassis is in really great shape. Bumper's got a little bit of a flex um, mark to it. Start of a little teeny tiny crack. But to be expected for as probably hard as these things were driven. Um, but if you're not familiar with these, these had a whole different rear end than the standard ORV chassis. You know, this does not have the twin plate chassis, did not have the weird dog bones or anything. This had a beefier... Um, rear end had the steel drive shafts uh, back here, but pretty much from there forward, it's basically the same ORV chassis. Um, they did, like I said, this is different, and I believe this is a little bit different. Um, the way because it actually has a mounting tab back here um, that surrounds the, the MSC. But I'm gonna get this rebuilt and refurbished. So, I started getting in some parts for it, obviously. Blackfoot body. We have a new driver figure and tailgate. Um, this was one of the harder ones to source. We have a, yeah, see this is the the actual Blackfoot, the ORV um, Blackfoot cover. And it does not have these little extended mounting tabs back here. The front, I believe, is the same. And yeah, the front's pretty much the same. It's just a lot longer and it has little screw mounts back here. So that actually anchors down behind the uh, mechanical speed control. Uh, but I got this because it has all the lights on it and a few other little bits and pieces I may need. Um, I ended up getting a, a great deal on front and rear bumpers. Um, so I got a pair of those from TTP over in the UK. Um, those guys are great. And then you need a roll bar to put on it. So the only thing I'm missing for the body right now, oh, I do have MCI decals for it. They're tucked away down in the drawer. Um, so the only thing I'm missing right now for the body is the windshield. So I do need to get that, um, I need to find that and get that ordered. Um, and then source shocks and then start fabbing a um, shock tower for this. So this one, you know, again, this one's probably going to get completely torn down, you know, toothbrush scrubbed, cleaned up, and, you know, gone through from top to bottom, front to back. Uh, the wheels are in really good shape. Tires are not in bad shape, but they are getting a little stiff, and they, I think one of it does have a, yeah, they're a little bit wobble, 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 a um, little bit out of round. Uh, but these are just the Monster Beetle tires. They're not glued, so I can source. I actually might have a pair of those i don't know but yeah other than the the broken front end um you know i was really happy to find this these are not cheap anymore um i was looking to try to find a new inbox or you know an unrun kit and man they're expensive <laughs> you know i have sentimental attachment to it but not that much sentimental attachment to it so we got one that's a little bit banged up needs some work uh we'll give it the tlc it deserves uh get it cleaned up get it uh, painted and stickered and get it back out and running. Thankfully, I have, you know, pretty much everything for this one. Um, like I said, I just need to get the, uh, the actual windshield uh, for the body. And then I pretty much have everything. So I'm looking forward to getting this one done too. Like I said, I have a lot of stuff to get through. <laughs> And I've still got stuff I've got to finish. Um, I have a Kyosho build that is stalled out right now. Um, you know, I'm not going to, at this point, I really don't care if you guys know or not. It's, it's an Icarus. And um, I'm missing 
two or three tiny little key component parts. Um, they're little tiny pivot ball cups. They're like a little plastic, like a triangle that the pivot ball sits in into the suspension arms. I lost those. I lost the little tiny uh, countersink head screws that went with them. I put them somewhere. I don't know where that somewhere went. Um, I am pretty confident at this point that wherever I put them um, ended up in the trash. So I have torn this shop up. I've torn my garage shop up. I have, you know, been through everything five times. I cannot find them. But I did find the screws um, for something completely different, but they are the correct size and, you know, countersunk and everything. So they'll work. Um, I just still need those little cups. I've got stuff I've got to work on and I'm still hunting for parts and for some of them. So things are going to keep coming. I don't know what's going to be the particular order of them. Obviously, the Avante, Aero Avantes are going to be up next. Um, the Avante Mark II will probably be right after those. So I really want to see the difference between those two chassis, you know, the DFO2, DFO3. Um, I've never built either one. Uh, the DFO2 went together really nice. It had a few little interesting things about it, um, but everything went together really well. So I'm really kind of keen to start working on a DFO3, but, you know, I got to get some stuff painted and decaled and stuff like that. I still got stuff to run and do run videos. I will try to get to that, but the track is an absolute disaster. Something just dug a giant hole out of the face of the jump. I was out there blowing leaves today, and evidently something's trying to make a home for the winter out of that. Now, as far as the track goes, um, I plan on taking that big jump completely out. It kind of got way bigger than I expected it to be. You know, I, was, I wanted a, a tabletop. You know, something that I could, if I couldn't make it over the jump, you know, I could jump, land, jump. Um, but it just kind of grew, you know, it went from like I wanted it this until it ended up like that. So that's going to come completely out. Um, I'm going to leave it basically a hard corner, straight hard corner. And what my plan is, is by taking that big jump out, one, I don't always have to go out there and work on that stupid jump face because every time it rains, you know, it gets rutted up, you know, if it, it's always something with that jump. <clears throat> so I'm going to take that out and then I can actually run the rally cars on there because, you know, they have this much ground clearance and they're not great jumpers. Um, and when they do jump, they tend to go doink. Um, so not great for the cars. Well, at least not for the, the bodies, at least. So I want to get that out. And then I want to make, you know, some small little four inch, six inch, you know, little half jumps. That way, when you're going around the track, you know, if I wanted to run a buggy or a truck out there, you know, I can put a big, big jump out there and, you know, put them wherever I want. And then, so they'll be the full width of the lane, but, you know, they'll be 18, 20 inches long and then, you know, four inches tall. So it's just a one-sided jump. I only go around it clockwise. I, my brain does not do counterclockwise on that track for some reason. So, you know, get them set out there. I can move them around, you know, bunch them up and put a jump after a jump, whatever I want to do. Um, I think that would be a much better way of doing it. You know, I've kind of given up on the, the track times, you know, so by taking the jump out, it's kind of kind of ruined that whole list of track times. I know I'll keep it up just for, you know, nostalgia's sake and, you know, but for it to be fair, I'd have to rerun all those cars. And you guys know that I am terrible about getting out and recording runs. I still get out and run the cars. Um, it's just not very often. And a lot of the times I do not want to set up all the cameras and I do not want to, you know, have to, you know, worry about the angles and the shots and all that stuff. I just go out and drive them to get rid of the crap from the day in my head and all that stuff. So, you know, driving them is, you know, when I just want to go out and zone out and, you know, watch it kick up some dust and put a smile on my face, not necessarily to make a video out of it. <clears throat> but I do know I do need to get some runs. I have the Mud Blaster 2 that we have the dual motors in that I've still not gotten out and run. Um, I have the Baja Champ and the Baja King. Um, both of those have never run. The Mad Fighter and the Mad Cap. The Mad Cap is probably just going to get a light little cruise around the yard. It's never going to hit the track. Um, the Mad Fighter, probably about the same. I may take it around the track once the jump is done gone, just put it around the track, you know, slide it in the corner here and there, but that one's not going to get torn up. Um, the Outrage, that needs to get run. The Toyota needs to get run. The Not Shot needs to get run. Uh, what else? Oh, I've got one down there that I'm showing you because I'm getting ready to do the video on that, but the um, BBX 
is done. So I'm going to get a video done just of that. So I don't want to show you that yet because I did a, a not box art paint job on that. Um, oh, the RC10 runner, that needs to get run. Yeah. I need to just quit my job and do RC, but <laughs> that is not going to pay the bills. So unless all of a sudden we get 50,000 more subscribers and I start making some money off of this, you know, you guys just got to bear with me. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm sorry this kind of was a long, rambly, a little bit of everything, but I hope you guys like taking a look at what's coming up, what I've got going on, what I've been, you know, kind of keeping in the background for a little bit, trying to build up some stuff to work on for a while. But everybody out there, you guys be happy, be healthy, be safe. Let me know what's your favorite one um, of all of these. Which one are you more most eager to see built? Um, which one do you care nothing about? <laughs> Whatever. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And I will talk to you guys on the next one. See ya. Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Adam. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'm Adam and I can't talk.